Viruses are kind of in between living and non-living. They have this biological capacity, but they need a host to do their job. All right, so they're not something that can replicate on their own. It's a very strange, freaky thing that I think a lot of zombie movies are derived from the action of viruses. Shout out to Night of the Living Dead. I should not have been watching that as a kid. But viruses actually work by latching onto specific cells in the host body, and they inject their genetic material into the vulnerable cells, keyword vulnerable cells, to infect them. And then a cascade of events is triggered, resulting in the merger of the virus with the cell. This merger allows the virus to release its genetic material and hijack the cell's internal machinery. And once this happens, the human cell is then turned into a factory that starts churning out new virus cells. So again, a virus injects itself and its genetic information into vulnerable cells and hijacks the cell, making the cell print out and do the things that it wants to do. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the movie Captain Phillips, right? When the dude is like, look at me, look at me. I'm the captain now. That's what happens when a virus comes along and injects itself into a vulnerable Tom Hanks cell. Now, fortunately, as it's designed to, the human immune system has several different ways to identify and to eradicate viral infected cells. So let's talk a little bit about how your body, how your immune system actually works in response to viruses. Your immune system has a vast array. It's a highly complex intelligence system. And one of the weapons at its disposal are cytotoxic T cells. Now, cytotoxic T cells are actually circulating your system, sort of like a police car on patrol. And what it's scanning for, if it notices a virus has blocked a receptor on a cell, it's kind of like cells have these receptors that are there to you know, connect with proteins, to connect to do behaviors. And a virus can attach and sit right there onto a cellular receptor. And these cytotoxic T cells are just patrolling like a police car. And if they notice, hey, there's a, a viral attaching to that receptor, it releases these cytotoxic factors to take out that uh, attempted uh, hijacker, that attempted uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto virus. So that's one weapon that's always scanning and patrolling via the immune system. Another immune factor is called your NK cells, our natural killer cells. Now, sometimes viruses actually try to hide. They're very crafty and they try to hide out and they cause a reduction in the active receptor sites on the cell. And natural killer cells function kind of like the FBI, sniffing out clues and seeing that the virus is trying to hide. And when they discover that, hey, this isn't adding up over here, this cell is not looking like the rest of these cells, it's not functioning normally, it puts a case together, and then it goes after the viral infected cells by releasing toxic substances that destroy the infected cells as well. So those are your NK cells. Another immunological weapon that we have are called interferons. Interferons are a group of signaling proteins made and released by your host cells in response to the presence of viruses. Now they're named interferons because of their ability to quote, interfere with viral replication and protecting nearby cells from viral infections. Now these interferons are sort of like undercover agents. They're there working with the host cells. They're, they're kind of in the environment. They're keeping an eye out and they're working to send signals and to interfere with any kind of wrongdoing that may take place. All right, so those are our interferons. Another weapon that we have within the context of our immune system are called antibodies. All right, antibodies. Now, some antibodies have this unique ability to actually stick to receptors on viruses, making them unable to attach to other cells. In essence, these antibodies work sort of like sticking a kick me sign on the back of a virus as it's trying to you know, do its thing. And your immune system comes along and just kicks the virus right in the pantalones for trying to do the thing that it's doing. So 
Antibodies work by one way is they actually stick to the receptors on viruses. And another way that antibodies work is they tag viruses and send macrophages to destroy them by eating them up like little Pac-Man. All right, so the, they're putting out signs, they're labeling things, they're like little informants. That's what antibodies are, they're like little informants. They're like, hey, you see that virus over there? You didn't hear this from me, but they're like that, okay? Now, we've got antibodies, we've got cytotoxic T cells, we've got interferons, we've got NK cells, and also, and there's so much more, but one more thing that I wanna share with you in regards to our incredible immune system is we have what's known as your B cells, right? Your B cells are responsible for what's known as humoral immunity. And humoral immunity produces antibodies that, quote, remember an infection and stand ready in case your body should ever be exposed again. This is how your body, once you're infected or come in contact with a virus, the intelligence of your immune system to learn that virus and to remember how to handle that virus with speed is thanks to the reaction and the capabilities of your B cells, all right? So the, the B cells are kind of like advanced surveillance, all right? It's like the facial recognition that they're trying to do right now, but there, it's like that. Very advanced surveillance technology that is always scanning and looking for uh, their target, okay? so really amazing all these different capacities of the immune system and this is just scratching the surface 